Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket suffered an anomaly during an uncrewed space mission on September 12. On Monday morning, a New Shepard suborbital rocket launched on the NS-23 mission, lifted off from Launch Site 1 in West Texas. The mission wasn't carrying any space tourists on board, instead, it was a cargo flight that aimed to take 36 payloads on a brief tour to suborbital space and back. The launch appeared to be going as expected until about T plus 1 minutes. However, at an altitude of around 8,500 meters, the plume from the hydrogen-fueled BE-3 engine that powers the rocket changed its appearance, and the vehicle began to swerve slightly off vertical. The capsule's solid-fueled launch abort motor activated instantly, generating a quick pulse of 311 kilonewtons of thrust to propel the craft away from the failing rocket. The capsule reached a peak altitude of about 11.4 kilometers and then stabilized itself as it deployed three drogue parachutes and three main chutes for a relatively gentle ride back to the ground. The in-flight abort saved the reusable capsule as well as the mission's scientific payloads. The capsule touched down near the launch site about five and a half minutes after liftoff. Blue Origin tweeted later that the capsule escape system functioned as designed and the booster impacted the ground after the launch failure. It is currently unclear what caused the anomaly, however, the engine's behavior may indicate a propulsion system malfunction. A frame-by-frame -frame analysis shows debris falling off the booster just before the capsule fired its escape motor. Blue Origin is currently working to understand what caused the anomaly, and the FAA is overseeing the investigation. NS-23 is the first uncrewed New Shepard voyage in more than a year, and it uses a different capsule and rocket than passenger missions. This specific capsule is RSS HG Wells, and it is paired with New Shepard Booster 3. Both first flew in December 2017, and the last in August 2021. The anomaly that happened on Monday was the second in-flight anomaly experienced by the New Shepard program. The first happened during the vehicle's debut launch in 2015, when the first stage booster crashed instead of landing. The payload of that mission was successfully delivered to suborbital space. It is unknown how the recent anomaly will affect future New Shepard missions, however, the incident will undoubtedly halt New Shepard launches until the teams have a clear grasp of what went wrong and how it can be avoided in the future. SpaceX launched a commercial communications satellite and several Starlink satellites into orbit on September 10, setting a new launch record for its Falcon 9 rocket. The mission, which lifted off from Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, was one of SpaceX's most complex launches to date. The 70-meter-tall Falcon 9 rocket carried 34 Starlink Internet satellites, as well as the Blue Walker 3 communication satellite into two distinct orbits. About eight and a half minutes after liftoff, the rocket's first stage, designated Booster B1058, landed on a drone ship station in the Atlantic Ocean. The booster made its 14th flight on this mission, marking a new reuse record. It debuted on 30 May 2020, with the launch of SpaceX's first astronaut mission aboard a Crew Dragon spacecraft. Approximately 50 minutes into the mission, the rocket's upper stage deployed the Blue Walker 3 satellite into a circular orbit at an altitude of 513 kilometers and an inclination of 53.2 degrees. The 34 Starlink satellites were deployed just over two hours after liftoff into a 330 kilometers circular orbit. The 1,500 kilograms Blue Walker 3 satellite, built by Texas-based firm AST Spacemobile, is the largest commercial antenna array ever launched into space. The satellite, with a large deployable origami-like antenna, consisting of 148 square tiles, will measure 64 square meters when fully unfolded. Its mission is to test new technology designed to provide global cellular phone service directly to users from space. The full AST Spacemobile constellation is expected to have 168 satellites orbiting between 725 and 740 kilometers altitude. The constellation will theoretically be able to reach over 700 million unconnected people. The goal is to fill coverage gaps and provide seamless high-speed phone and data service in underserved areas. If all goes well, the company plans to launch the first five operational satellites in late 2023, most likely aboard another SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Saturday's mission was the 41st SpaceX launch of 2022, and it featured a record number of firings for the upper stage of Falcon 9. The second stage was ignited five times over the course of more than two hours, four burns to place Blue Walker 3 and the Starlink satellites into two distinct orbits, followed by a final maneuver to return the upper stage to Earth's atmosphere for a destructive re-entry. The NASA-funded Capstone CubeSat mission to the Moon has entered safe mode after suffering a problem during a trajectory correction maneuver. 
The CIS Lunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology Operations and Navigation Experiment, or Capstone, was performing its third trajectory correction maneuver on September 8 when it ran into an unspecified problem late in the burn. According to mission controllers, the spacecraft was tumbling, the onboard computer systems were periodically resetting, and the spacecraft was using more power than it was generating from its solar panels. The vehicle is currently in a rotating orientation that provides partial illumination of the solar panels, which results in weak transmission signals from the spacecraft antennas. While work is ongoing to diagnose the cause of the anomaly, the team is preparing the spacecraft to attempt a detumble operation to regain attitude control. After a successful detumble, the vehicle will regain control of its orientation, aligning the solar panels to the sun and fully charging the batteries. The spacecraft will then orient to the ground and await further instructions. These recovery operations will be further evaluated and executed over the coming days. The 25 kg capstone CubeSat was launched atop a Rocket Lab Electron rocket on June 28. The spacecraft is headed to test operations in the near rectilinear halo orbit around the Moon, the same one that will be used by NASA's Gateway Space Station in the coming years. Please check out my previous video to learn more about the mission, link in the description. Rocket Lab's Electron rocket sent a radar satellite into a low Earth orbit on September 15. On Thursday evening, an Electron rocket carrying the Strix-1 satellite for Sinspective lifted off from Rocket Lab's launch facility in New Zealand. The mission, dubbed the Owl Spreads Its Wings, was Rocket Lab's 30th Electron launch, bringing its 150th satellite into space and flying its 300th Rutherford engine. 54 minutes after liftoff, Electron's photon kick stage placed the satellite into a 563-kilometer high orbit, inclined 97 degrees to the equator. The 100-kg satellite is the third in a series of up to 30 satellites proposed by Synspective to collect synthetic aperture radar imagery that can detect millimeter-level changes to the Earth's surface from space. Rocket Lab launched the first satellite of the Strix program, Strix Alpha, in December 2020, and Strix Beta in February 2022. The full constellation is scheduled to be operational around 2026, with the next three satellites scheduled for launch in 2023. Together, these satellites will gather data of metropolitan centers on a daily basis to support urban development planning, construction and infrastructure monitoring, and disaster response. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. SpaceX continues to work around the clock to prepare Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 for the orbital flight test. On September 12, SpaceX conducted a 33-engine spin prime test of Booster 7. Monday's spin prime test was the second successful 33-engine test of Booster 7, the first of which occurred on September 8. A prior attempt on July 11 resulted in a fuel-air mixture detonation a few seconds into the test. The anomaly prompted several repairs to the orbital launch mount and a redesign of the engine chill-down procedures. In the new engine chill system, the methane needed to chill down the Raptor engines is channeled away from the orbital launch mount through new pipes, rather than being vented directly below, where it can mix with the oxygen vented from the vehicle. Monday's spin prime test saw SpaceX activating the booster's engines in rapid succession. It appears that the inner three engines were triggered first, followed by the middle 10 and outer 13 engines in quick succession. Perhaps, SpaceX is planning to ignite the booster engines in this fashion during an actual launch, rather than igniting them all at once. SpaceX conducted a short multi-engine spin prime test on Friday morning. It was the eighth spin prime test of Booster 7 overall. While the exact objectives of the next phase of Booster 7 testing are unknown, it is expected that Booster 7 tests will continue to progress towards increasingly complex static fire tests with more and more engines. SpaceX engineers continue to upgrade the orbital launch mount for the 33-engine static fire test. They have begun installing the water deluge system and associated plumbing lately. It's unclear how long it will take SpaceX to ready the launch mount for the much-anticipated 33-engine static fire. For the past few days, Starship 24 has been attached to a crane at the build site. During these days, teams could be seen working on the ship. On Thursday morning, teams installed a temporary work platform around the payload bay section of Ship 24. Standing on the work platform, they installed reinforcement metal sheets around the edges of the payload bay door. Maybe SpaceX is planning to load second-generation Starlink satellites into the ship right at the launch site, rather than taking the ship back to the build site for satellite loading. The satellites will be deployed into low Earth orbit during the orbital flight test, which will most likely happen by late 2022 or early 2023. Given that multiple static fire tests, including a six-engine test, have already been completed, SpaceX is unlikely to continue with Ship 24 tests. 
Instead, they might soon stack the ship atop Booster 7 for full-stack cryo tests and static fires. On Wednesday night, SpaceX conducted a movement test of the Starship's quick disconnect mechanism installed on the orbital launch tower. They might be testing the system ahead of the full-stack cryo-proof test. Super Heavy Booster 8 recently received all four aerodynamic surfaces, also known as chines. They are intended to increase the aerodynamic stability of Super Heavy Boosters during atmospheric re-entry. Booster 8 will be fully ready for cryo-proof tests within a few weeks. However, testing will be delayed because Booster 7 is currently occupying the orbital launch mount. Booster 8's partner, Starship 25, was fully stacked on September 12, completing the primary structure of the vehicle. Over the next few weeks, workers will outfit the vehicle with aft flaps, COPVs, aero covers, raceways, and the remaining thermal protection tiles. Ship 25 will be ready for cryo-proof tests once these works are completed. Engine installation will commence after the ship successfully completes cryo tests. The stacking of the Super Heavy Booster 9's liquid oxygen tank section is underway inside the wide bay. The tank has recently grown to 16 rings in height. The methane tank section of Booster 9 was completed a few weeks ago. The installation of aerial work platforms inside the wide bay is progressing. Several platforms have already been installed, and they will make it easier for the SpaceX teams to work on Starships and Super Heavy prototypes. The Can Crusher test stand, which was used for the structural stress tests of the Booster 7.1 test tank, was returned to the build site on September 12th. Booster 7.1 was returned to the build site on Friday morning, signaling the end of its test campaign. Progress is continuing at a fast pace at SpaceX's Kennedy Space Center Starship facilities. The eighth section of the Starship orbital launch tower was stacked atop the seventh section several days ago. On September 11, teams rolled out the ninth and final section of the tower from SpaceX's operations area at Roberts Road to launch Complex 39A. The sheaves, part of the draw works mechanism that will lift the rocket catching and stacking arms, have already been installed in this section. A combination of six sheaves and steel cables connected to the draw works will facilitate the movement of the arms through the launch tower. The ninth section was stacked atop the eighth section on Friday morning, completing the 146-meter tall launch tower structure. The construction of the rocket catching and stacking arms, carriage system, and the Starship quick disconnect mechanism is underway at Roberts Road, and they could be rolled out to the pad soon. Part of the booster quick disconnect hood was recently delivered to pad 39A. The hood will protect the sensitive components of the booster's quick disconnect mechanism during liftoff. There has been no news on the orbital launch mount table that will be placed atop the launch mount legs. It is probably being prefabricated inside the production tent at Roberts Road. Cryogenic propellant storage tanks are taking shape near the launch tower at Pad 39A. Construction of two storage tanks is underway, and SpaceX is repurposing an old NASA hydrogen storage tank to store liquid methane required for Starship launches. Starship transport stands have recently arrived in Florida. These stands will be used to transport Starship prototypes from Roberts Road to Pad 39A. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.